Shalom, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to CBC Online Church Service. Today is a special day. It is Mother's Day. Let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord for all the mothers as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord and to receive His Word. Come, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up your name. We proclaim that greatness, power, glory, victory, and majesty belongs to you. We declare that Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. O oh Lord, we lovingly lift up all mothers to you. We thank you for their compassionate hearts, for their hearts of nurture, for their self-giving love, for their unconditional love, and for their labor of love through all the seasons of life. We pray for a fresh impartation of God's divine health on all mothers, for healing and restoration where there are illness, for refreshing of the body where there are fatigue, for renewal of the mind in times of stress, and for spiritual strength in the spirit. We therefore pray for all mothers that the God of hope will fill each of them with all joy and peace in believing that they may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, we are here to offer our praise and thanksgiving unto you. We purpose to proclaim that the Lord our God is good and your love endures forever and your faithfulness continues through all generations. Even as we gather in different locations, we pray that your love will bind our hearts together in one spirit, one mind, and one purpose. O oh Holy Spirit, have your way amongst us today. Mold us, change us, transform us, and conform us to your will. May each of us encounter you in a fresh manner today. In Jesus' most exalted name we pray. Amen. Oh 
your love for us is unmatching, is unfailing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
thank you for the work you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal, true on earth and heaven above. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the holy place. The joy of the Trust in your unfailing love For you alone are God eternal Throughout earth and heaven And Lord, we want to lift your name on high And Lord, we want to thank you For the works you've done in our lives And Lord, we trust in your
for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal, true our earth and heaven. you in this place lord amen praise the lord for a wonderful time of worship thank you worship team at this time we would like to bring our tithes and offerings to the lord as a part of our worship today is also the second sunday where we collect the offering for cbc mission works let us pray heavenly father we bring before you our tithes and offerings as an expression of our worship and thanksgiving to you. We are truly grateful that you enable us to work and to manage the resources, the businesses and the workforce to provide for our needs and for the ministries of your church and the advancement of your kingdom. O oh Lord, we thank you that you are the God of mission. You came on a mission through the redemptive history to bring us out from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ. And you said in your word that you are not willing that any should perish, but all to come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. We embrace your heart of mission for the people of the world and we offer our money and resources towards this end for the works of mission undertaken by CBC across the nation and amongst the nations of the world. Father, we pray, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come and be established in the hearts of the people across the mission fields. Your will be done in the life of these people, even as it is in heaven. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us welcome Elder Tan Bing Tiong as he brings us the Word of God. Uh, good morning, Civilians, and uh, welcome to our digital service this morning. It is also Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers and may the Lord bless you richly this day and enjoy today for it is your special day. In conjunction with Mother's Day, uh, we want to talk about parenting, especially from the viewpoint of uh, motherhood. In a time of crisis, uh, we know our crisis of the pandemic is not over and uh, mothers and parents, especially mothers, face a, a lot of challenges and we want to look at the Word of God this morning from the life of Naomi, lessons from Naomi uh, to see how uh, God can help us through this crisis as parents and in particular as mothers. The book of uh, uh, Ruth, this is where the story of Naomi comes from, actually has got two heroines. Uh, of course, when we typically look at the book of Ruth, uh, we typically talk about Ruth and not Naomi so much. But this morning, uh, we particularly want to look at the book of Ruth from the perspective of Naomi. Now, the book of Ruth is a very interesting book. It's one of the, possibly the only book that was written from a female viewpoint, you know, a, a woman's uh, viewpoint. And uh, so this, this morning, we want to look at the events related to Naomi, uh, her husband and son's death, her daughter's-in-law, her return to Bethlehem, her God, her relative, uh, Boaz, uh, her land that she, she wanted to sell, and her descendants. We, we want to trace all these events back to Naomi and learn from her life lessons uh, uh, and uh, looking at God through the eyes of an embittered mother, her struggles in crisis, facing a bleak future, and God's gracious healing 
and restoration. And there are many lessons we can learn from uh, Naomi's life with regards to our own parenting, especially motherhood in this time of crisis, in this time of pandemic. So let's go and, and, and look at the book of Ruth. As an introduction to Naomi, uh, let me just read the first few verses of Ruth. Chapter 1, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell, sojourn, live for a while in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite woman, one named Orpah, and the other Ruth. After they had lived there for about 10 years, both Marlon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. So this is where we pick up uh, Naomi's story. She was left alone with, without her two sons and her husband. And so now in the family, there were three childless widows. Naomi and her two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. Now, this is not a very good situation to be in, especially in, at the time in Israel and during the ancient world, to be a childless widow was to be among the lowest, most disadvantaged class in Israel and the ancient world. You know? And there was no one to support you, and you had to live on the generosity of strangers. And this was the predicament Naomi was facing. And she was in Moab, uh, an enemy, in a way, an enemy territory. And she had no family in Moab, no one else to help her. Right? And, and this is after having lived through an initial food famine. You remember, they came to Moab because of the food famine. She now faces a desperate and bleak crisis of a family famine. And this is the context in which we pick up her story and her life lessons. So, so this morning, I want to pick up from where pick up from where Pastor Reynold uh, has left us with in the morning uh, devotion. Uh, Pastor Reynold recently talked about crisis and talked about how we need to build an inner fortitude uh, to, to, to withstand hardship and crisis that comes through our life. And she, he talks about the three Ps, perspective, position, posture. Uh, and, and, and we want to look at these three things, perspective, you know, what is our perspective of God in crisis? And the right perspective of God is what enables us to go through crisis and build an inner fortitude. And, and we want to particularly focus on, on this perspective that God does not promise a world full of crisis, but God is in control all the time. And if we have this perspective, right, then we will be in the right position before God. Right? Our position in God will not be shaken. Okay? And, and uh, in Christ, our position is that God is our Heavenly Father. And being a Heavenly Father, He's always our protector, preserver and provider. And this is what Naomi found, found out uh, in her life. And this is what we also will be finding out uh, this morning. And finally, in crisis, we need to have the right posture. Right? A posture of faith that helps us make a choice to trust God even when the road ahead seems hard and uncertain. And if we have these three Ps, we will build this inner fortitude that can withstand any crisis, crisis even in pandemic, even in parenting in this pandemic crisis. So let's go. Let's start with uh, perspective. Okay? Uh, perspective has a root meaning, a Latin root meaning. It means to look through. Okay, and and uh, it is the way that one looks at something or sees something. Okay? Uh, so perspective is your point of view. It's the lens you see the world through and determines how you view others, yourself, others and everything else uh, around you. Look at this picture on my left, the picture of this woman. Do, do you see a young woman or you do, do you see an old woman? Okay. What is your perspective? What do you see? Okay. And, and uh, go, go stare at this picture as long as you like. And, and you should be able to see both. You know, the same picture. Some of you may see a young woman. Some of you may see an old woman. Both of you are right. Uh, but that is your perspective. This is how you see it. 
Uh, I, I want to focus on perspective of more importance like the picture on my right. Okay, this, this is two fish facing a crisis. All right? uh, the water has, has uh, uh, gone down to half. And, and one fish says, whoa, half empty, definitely half empty. And the other fish say, just listen to you, always the pessimist and still happily breathing inside the part where there is water. These are all issue of perspective. Now, what is important for us to understand is whether you are still staring at this picture of this woman on my left or looking at this picture of this fish on on my right, uh, the power of perspective is this, we receive what we perceive, all right? And, and the view or perspective of a person, of the crisis that you are facing, what you see in the crisis, what you see around you in the, in the crisis, uh, they, are going, they, are, they are going through, can change the meaning and experience of the viewer. All right? And that is why in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 to 23, Jesus says that the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now when Jesus talks about the eye here, obviously he's not talking about physically seeing because this verse also applies to those that are blind. They are maybe physically blind. So he's talking about perspective. You know what Jesus is telling us is that pers our perspective, how we view things and circumstances around our life is very important. If we are able to look at the situations that life has through the lens of God's promises, even though the circumstances are tough, we are filled with light. But if we look at our surroundings through the lens of a world without God, we are left with despair and hopelessness. We are left with a view of darkness. Right? And if we who have the light see things in the darkness, how terrible is the darkness? This is what Jesus is, is saying. So Jesus is telling those who want to follow him that seeing the world through the, the lens of the scripture is a discipline that brings great reward. Right? And, and so coming back to this truth, right, we want to look at how Elimelech see the world around him. At the same time, we also want to see how Naomi see the world around her. And, and we want to, to see that they both have different perspective of the crisis uh, that they face. You know? And we want to understand what lens they use, what were their perspective. So let's look at Elimelech first. Uh, we have read just now about the, the, from Ruth 1 to 1, the Elimelech, when he saw the famine in the land of Bethlehem. By the way, Bethlehem means house of bread. Right? But when he saw the famine in, in the land of Bethlehem, uh, he took his whole family to Moab. Okay? And, and uh, uh, this was during the time of the judges. Now we need to understand that in the time of the judges, there was anarchy and there was irresponsible li li living. All right? And uh, in fact, the time of the judges were actually dark days of Israel. The period was characterized by the phrase, Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So if you go and read Judges 17, 6, 18, 1, 19, 1, 21, 25, you will see these words repeating in Judges. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. This was the characteristic of that time. And out of that period of chaos and anarchy and irresponsible living, out of that period of the dark days, for Israel emerged this beautiful story in Ruth right, about God's preservation of, of this family through uh, Naomi and Ruth and Boaz. Right? And, 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 and as though there was this star in this period of, of darkness. And that's our, our God. You know? Our God is always there. Our God is always continuing as a star, even if times look very dark. And this is the message we, we, we need to, to catch hold of. Right? So let's continue with this story. So, so he went from the house of bread because he was facing a, a famine. Times were tough. So he went to this pagan land of Moab. All right? So the Elimelech saw the famine from the eyes of the world and he did what was right in his own eyes. 
And what was right in his own eyes was he saw that his family was going to be without food, right? And he didn't see God in the famine, but he saw Moab as a, as a solution, as an outlet for, for, for him to, to feed his, his family, right? And then so he did what was right in his own eyes. Because when he saw what others were doing, there were a lot of others that, was, that were leaving for other lands to escape the famine. And, and he decided to trust in his own self and to trust in Moab rather than to trust God. And we know that doing what is right in our own eyes often lead us to disobedience. And this is what happened to Elimelech and his sons and his, and his family. They went to live in Moab. But do you know that Moab is an enemy of God? In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3 and then verse 6, right? God says, No Ammonite or no Moabite shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of their descendants shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. You shall never promote their welfare or their prosperity as long as you live. God gave this commandment to the nation of Israel. I am very sure Elimelech knew about this, but yet he chose in the crisis, in the, the uh, uh, famine, in the challenges of the crisis to turn his eyes away from God to the enemy in, in which God says, don't associate with, with, with them. And he made this blunder and he made this uh, mistake. And as a result of his misplaced trust, you know that they perish in the crisis in Moab. Um, even the sons, right? The sons married Moabite uh, uh, women. So they all perish, you know, and they all lost this famous lineage of David and Jesus to Bo Boaz, okay? Uh, because we know that, that Boaz was from the same Epaphrite uh, uh, family, from the same line of family as, as uh, uh Elimelech. In fact, Elimelech uh, was supposed to carry that, that, that line. Uh, but it was given to Boaz because of their disobedience and their choice that was made wrongly because of their wrong perspective of God. All right? uh, uh, we know that Boaz faced the same famine crisis as Elimelech, but he decided to stay on in the house of the bread in, in Bethlehem to trust that God will come and deliver them uh, uh, one day, which God did. Of, of course, but uh, Elimelech and his sons perished, right? Now let's look at Naomi. Naomi was also left with a crisis, okay? So now she has gone and lived in Moab, and the Bible tells us, the book of Ruth tells us that both uh, Marlon and Kidon died, okay? And, and so she was left with, with, with her daughter-in-law. And in verse 6, this is the one I want to point out. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. So, so Naomi, although she was in Moab, kept a, wa a watchful eye on what was ha happening in Bethlehem, uh, where she came, she came from. And then one day she heard, she heard that the Lord has come. The Lord has come to the aid of his people. And immediately she prepared to return home. Okay? So she went home. And in verse 20, we pick up the story. Uh, when the people saw her, they said, Is that Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi, which means sweetness. Call me Mara, bitter. All right? This is what, what Mara means. For the Almighty has caused me great grief and bitterness. I left full with a husband and two sons. But the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. All right? And you pick up from verse 22. So Naomi returned from the country of Moab and with her Ruth, the Moabite Mitas, her daughter-in-law. And they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. She left, Naomi left in a famine. She came back in a barley harvest. Hours. This, this is our, our, our God that we, that we need to, to be aware of. So what is Naomi's perspective? You know, despite the feeling that God's hand was against her, though she felt that the hand of the Lord has gone out against her, she did not actually grow bitter against God. She said, don't call me Mara. It's only for, for her herself, all right? She didn't blame God, but she felt that the, land, the hand of the Lord has gone out uh, uh, against her. But nevertheless, right, Naomi is 
still made up her mind to go back to God, to go back to her God and to back to the land of Israel, back to Bethlehem, back to the house of bread. All right? and, and Naomi didn't accuse God of doing something wrong against her. She acknowledged his total control over all circumstances. And actually, if you look at it, it was actually an expression of trust in God to go back to, 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 to God. Because if Naomi was bitter or angry against God, she probably would have gone the opposite direction, gone further from God rather than back uh, to Him. Instead, she showed that she trusted the sovereignty of God and knew that despite her personal calamities, He is a good God who blesses. Right? And, and so she could see that God is in control all the time. Whether in famine or in harvest, God is in control all the time. And so she did what was right in God's eyes. So her perspective is this, that God our Father is in control all the time. In good times and bad times, in good times and hard times, God is in control all the time. And if God is in control on the, all the time, I can rest in the fact that God is in control, which means that I can face things that are out of my control and not act out of control, out of control especially in crisis. So in this season of COVID-19, we need to have a fresh spiritual perspective of the times, not merely looking at this pandemic from purely humanistic eyes. We cannot just see it from a human eye perspective, right? Uh, there will be good and bad seasons and God is never erratic and random but always in control and He will make everything beautiful in its time. So the view or perspective of a person of the crisis they are going through as we mentioned just now can change the meaning and experience of the viewer. So, so parents, in this pandemic, what is your perspective of parenting? You know, parenting has always been tough, but the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19 has made it even tougher, all right? And, and we know that parents are under tremendous, enormous strain, right? But, but this morning, I also want to point out that generally speaking, working mothers are a, bearing a greater burden than fathers. Because we live in a male biased patriarchal society. You, you, you know, we, we live in a society that is that is disproportionate in terms of the expectations of the father and the mother. Uh, we expect the, the mother, she may have a full-time job, she may be working in a full-time job from home, and but we expect the mother to fulfill work, household and caregiving responsibility even during the, the, the work, work week in this type of society. So the burden on the mothers is tremendous and the stress on the mothers is tremendous, especially in crisis. You know, compound this with mothers who not only have to work, who not only have to care for the children, right? Sometimes they also have to care for the ailing parents. They also have to care for the ailing spouse, okay? And all this adds to the stress and, and uh, uh, crisis that they, they, they face. Now, we talk about this. We talk about this working mother's dilemma, this pandemic fatigue and frustration uh, 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 before, right? Waiting for the pandemic to, to end and life becomes one big heavy sigh. You know, you don't even know whether your house is your home or your house is a workplace. Right? And, and this confusion and delineating of, of this line makes work, work from home, makes home, makes a mother's job, uh, makes parenting so much more stressful. Right? But this, this morning, our message is this. Right? Learn from Naomi. Don't be a sighful mother. Don't face the pandemic with parenting, fatigue, frustration and, and fear. Right? And we know that fear often comes when we sense losing control. So mothers, fear not. Pass control back to God. Like Naomi, remain, reset, return home to our fam Heavenly Father. For whether famine or harvest, He has always been in control. All right. So, so this morning, have the right perspective, okay, mothers, uh, uh, parents. You know, have the right perspective. All of us who are facing crisis have a right perspective. Do you have Naomi or Elimelech's perspective?
right? So is this pandemic as a mother and as parents, which fish are you? Which lens are you using? And remember this, Jesus says the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? If our perspective of God is right, if our eyes see God as in control all the time, in good times and in crisis, then our position in Christ will not be shaken. And we will know and know and know deep in our heart and spirit that our position, whether in crisis or in good times, is that in Christ, God is our Heavenly Father, our protector, preserver and provider. You know, sometimes it's strange that as parents, we, we, we forget that we have a father. We have another heavenly father, which is far greater than all human parents can, can, can be. Right? And, and in Christ, right, we are his children and God is our heavenly father. So I want to talk about, about God, our father, is our protector, preserver and provider of the family, uh, even in good and in crisis times. All right? uh, let's look at this, God is our father. You know, Naomi, who knows God. I, you know, Naomi, if you read through her life, you, you will sense that although she struggles, although she has got, uh, 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 said that God has, God has, um, her hand, God's hand has been against her, uh, she is a, a godly woman, if you tra trace her, her, her life. And, and knowing, as a godly woman, she would have known that God is a heavenly father. Because in Deuteronomy 14, 1 to 2, right, uh, the Bible tells us that you are the sons of the Lord your God. Okay? You are holy people to the Lord your God and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for His treasured position out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Out of all the people, Moses said, you are the sons of the Lord your God. In other words, God is your Father. All right? and, and today for us, we know this continues because John 1.12 says, Yet to all who did receive Him, who received Christ, to all those who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And because you are sons, Paul says in Galatians 4.6, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, so God is our Father and our position in Christ as a child of God does not change whether in crisis or in good times. God will always remain our Father. And if God always remains our Father, we know this, as fathers should be, right? Fathers are always protector, preserver and provider for the family. And, and this is what Naomi found out. God used Boaz by divine appointment to be the protector, preserver, provider for Naomi and Ruth in Naomi's crisis, right? And if we go and read the book of Ruth, we will see this in, in chapter 2, verse 3, right? God protects Ruth. Uh, uh, you know, we know that Ruth was working in a field belonging to Boaz. There were so many fields there, but she went to glean, right, behind the harvesters in the field of Boaz. Okay, and she went there by divine appointment. And in, in verse 8, we, we know that from, from uh, the protection that she had from Boaz, because Boaz told Ruth, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one. All right? I have commanded the servants not to touch you. Okay? Uh, so it is good, my daughter, for you to go out to work with his mates so that others do not assault you in another field. So, so God has appointed Boaz to protect Ruth as she goes about gleaning. Okay? And, and we know that God is our Father, is our protector. In Job 1.10, okay, the Bible tells us, Have not you, God, made a hedge, hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? In other words, God has built this hedge around our house, our family okay and protects us okay uh, in psalm 91 the lord is my refuge verse 9 and you make the most high your dwelling if you make god your dwelling no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent near your family near your house okay so we, we know we know this from from naomi as well and then god through boaz provides for naomi and ruth 
Okay, uh, so so we know that in, in chapter two, verse fifteen, uh, uh, Ruth went to glean from from the sheaves and from the stalks. And every time she goes and glean, she will bring back about an effa of barley. We read this in verse seventeen. An effa of barley is about a few days supply. So so uh, and Ruth will take this back to the ma- mother-in-law. And God has always provided enough food for Naomi and Ruth in this uh, crisis. He is our provider and and Naomi knew this he acknowledged, she acknowledged that it was the hand of God behind Boaz that provided and protected them all right that's why in verse 220 he said she said to Ruth may he be blessed of the Lord who has not ceased his kindness to the living and to the dead she recognized that this kindness is from from God. So in crisis, we must always remember that our father is a God of Naomi, a God of sweetness, not Mara, not bitterness. You know, good fathers are not in the business of creating bitterness in their in the children. Uh, Matthew 7, 11, Jesus tells us, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Okay, and, and we know this that God is always in the business of bringing sweetness into our, our life. In Ephesians, that's why uh, uh, in Ephesians 6, 4, God says, Fathers and mothers, do not provoke your children to anger or bitterness, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So it, it is the father's and mother's job, right, to bring sweetness into the family. And God, as a heavenly father, will also do this in our lives, even though sometimes our lives may be going through difficult and maybe very challenging circumstances. But don't, don't be bitter, but be better. All right? that, that is what we, we need to say. And, and uh, God will provide. We know that God's name is Yahweh Jireh. All right? The Lord will provide. So in Matthew 6, 9, Jesus tells us, pray then if you face a crisis, if you don't have enough to eat, if you don't have enough to clothe you, if your family is facing food crisis, if your family is facing financial crisis, pray then in this way, our Father who is heaven in heaven, give us this day our daily prayer. This is our Father, our provider. And finally, God through Boaz preserves Naomi's family. You know, you know, Boaz is the guardian redeemer of Naomi. We, we, we know this in chapter 2, verse 20, the second part. Naomi said to Ruth, This man is one of our closest relatives, one who has the right to redeem us, or the word is guardian redeemer. Now, a guardian redeemer is a close influential relative to whom members of the extended family could turn to for help. Usually, when the family line or possessions were in danger of being lost, this guardian redeemer comes back and redeems this the, the family. And he was respons- responsible for buying back family land sold during a crisis, buying back enslaved relatives, providing an heir for a dead brother, arranging the killing of a relative, caring for relatives in difficult circumstances. This was all the job of a guardian redeemer, all meant to preserve the family. All right? And God gave Naomi Boaz. All right? And that's why at the end of Ruth, in chapter 4, verse 9, okay, uh, uh, in verse 10, I have also acquired Ruth, the Moabites, my Moabites, the widow of Malan, to be my wife, to restore the name of the deceased to his inheritance, so that the name of the deceased will be preserved, will not be cut off from his brothers or from the gate of his birthplace. You are witnesses today. So this is what Naomi witnessed, that God is a preserver of the family. And if you trust God, if you have this perspective that God is in control, God will never cut off the family. He will never, never, never leave nor forsake the family, just as he never, never, never left or forsook uh, Naomi's family and kept this line until even the line of Jesus. So in our, if our perspective of God is right, if our eyes see God as in control all the time, in good times and in crisis, then our position will not be shaken even in crisis. And then our posture in Christ will be one of inner fortitude, 
confidence and faith and not fear and hopelessness in crisis. Then we will begin to build this inner fortitude, right? That will enable us to, to have courage in the face of adversity, in the face of, of crisis, just as Naomi faced. So let's talk finally about posture. So uh, we know this Naomi said, don't call me sweet, call me Mara, bitter, for God has caused me great grief and bitterness. Okay? Now, Naomi's initial posture of, of someone God has judged against, right? Uh, resulting in a despair of life uh, from a pleasant Naomi to a bitter Mara life. Okay? This is what Naomi initially faced. But she repented. Right? As she reflected on God, she repented from her struggles and returned to God. She returned to Bethlehem. She left Moab. Uh, and she had her perspective and position renewed. And, led, and this led to a faith that trusted God. And we saw the change in her in 2.20. Right? Naomi said to the daughter-in-law, she recognized that God's hand is beginning to be upon the family. May he be blessed of the Lord who has not ceased kindness, his kindness to the living and to the, to the dead. God has not ceased his kindness to us. She began to see that God has always been in control. And she began to see that she began to see hope because she began to see in Boaz a guardian redeemer, a preserver of the, the, the family. And she began to, to, to be positive. And in verse 3, chapter 3, verse 1, uh, Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, shall I not look for security and a home for you so that it may be well for you? And she began to care for, for Ruth and wanting to secure her, uh, her future. And she, 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 this, this change in life uh, uh, started to take her away from this Mara back to the Naomi, the sweet Naomi uh, we knew, we know. So there is never reason for us despair to despair in crisis. Even if initially we believe that the hand of the Lord has gone out against us, like our Naomi say against me. If we return to him, his hand will surely go out for us uh, again. You know, uh, uh, and this is what happened to Naomi. Although when she returned to to Bethlehem, she did not know that how God, how greatly God was going to bless her. At that time, she did not know, but she knew God as a father and enough to trust that God is always in control all the time time and that God is her father, her preserver, her protector and the provider of her family. And with this perspective, with this position, with this, uh, uh, it resulted in a posture of inner fortitude, a posture of faith, a posture of trust, right? So this, this, at this time in pandemic, parents, mothers, do, I, do you trust God to help you get your choices right? There are so many things coming at you. Do you trust God to get your choices right? You know, faith isn't a feeling. It's a choice to trust God even when the road ahead seems uncertain. This is what Naomi uh, did. And finally, in verse 4, 14, the woman said to Naomi, Blessed is the Lord who has not left you without a Redeemer today. And may His name become famous in Israel. May He also be the, to you one who restores life and sustains your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to Him, given birth to a grand son and the family is preserved the line is preserved the family is blessed naomi is blessed right even though of the hardship and the crisis she she went through she had the faith to trust and believe in god right so 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 have the right perspective that god does not promise a world free of crisis but god is in control all the time right and 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 with the perspective you are going to be in this position know your position that in christ you are a child of god and that god is our heavenly father and being a heavenly father he's our protector preserver and provider and will never 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 leave you nor your family nor forsake you so be strengthened in this perspective and this position and have this posture of faith that will help you make choices in crisis to trust god even when the road ahead seems hard and uncertain. And when we begin to do this, we will begin to build an inner fortitude in our life that will enable and give us courage to face adversity, to face this pandemic, even though it may not seem like ending yet, to face this pandemic with faith and not fear and or hopelessness and be able to parent our, our uh, 
family as Christ intended us to parent even in crisis. So in conclusion, I want to leave us with some concluding thoughts and some practical consideration, especially for the mothers since it's Mother's Day. All right? and, and I want to leave something for our mothers because mothers are usually very sensitive, more sensitive in a way to the children and God has given you this, this, this uh, uh, sensor or this sensitivity for, for the family a little bit more than the, the fathers. All right? and, and it is this heartbeat that, that God wants to remind you and, and, and uh, this morning that you are a, a valuable mother right, in, in His sight. And so remember, God is our heavenly Father and He's in control all the time even though we feel ourselves losing control in crisis even though our home and our our, our workplace has become so confusing right and we, sometimes we lose control of our family in this pandemic uh, rest assured right and and believe that with god if you know that have this perspective that god is control is in control you can rest in the truth that if god is going control i can face things that are out of my control and not act out of control all right and also remember that god is our heavenly father and is our protector, provider, preserver of our family. And as our Heavenly Father, He will never, never, never leave us nor forsake us or our families in this crisis. All right? Uh, I want to leave some practical considerations for the mothers. Uh, uh, this is adapted from a Rick Warren's uh, message when he wrote this in the, in the Katrina uh, crisis. Uh, but I believe the, the same truth can also apply to us in this crisis. All right? Uh, so the one thing he tells mothers Mothers, release your overwhelming stress Don't let this stress bottle up, okay Especially working mothers from, from home You feel all sorts of emotion and, and, and stress you, you, you feel the opposing emotions Between having to work in your house And having to do your caregiving duties, right And, and uh, uh, so sometimes you feel anger You feel depression You feel worry uh, You feel resentment You feel a sense of helplessness uh, Whatever you are feeling Let all this go Let this stress go In Psalm 46 verse 10 It says, let go of your concerns God says, then you will know that I am God I rule the nations I rule the earth I am in control And we often hear this Let go and let God So mothers, if you are facing this overwhelming stress Let go and let God right? And mothers choose not to be bitter It is very easy in harsh and hard circumstances To get bitter Get better, not bitter Choose to be better, not bitter Choose to be Naomi, not Mara all right? And you have to, the power to decide how this crisis affects you. You know, at the end, Naomi did realize that it was God's kindness and hand that protected, preserved, and provided for the family. All right? God allows famine, but He is a God of powers. All right? So have the right perspective, position, and posture. Mothers, your motherhood and the lives of your family is of value to God. Uh, uh, I want to remind you and let you know this. Even if the pandemic robs you of your job or decreases your income, it cannot rob you of your worth and purpose as a mother. A crisis teaches you that the greatest things in the world aren't things. What matters are relationship. The Apostle Paul said, all those things that I thought were valuable just aren't. And, and I hope that you discover this in the pandemic. What matters most is the health and safety of your family and your family is of value to God. Finally, mothers, this is a time to return to God, just like Naomi returned home. This is a time to return to Christ. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned the secret of being happy at any time in everything that happens. I can do all things through Christ because He gives me strength. So lean on Christ for stability. Such a person will not be overthrown by evil circumstances, by difficult hard circumstances. God's constant care of him will make a deep impression on all who see it. He does not fear bad news, nor live in dread of what may happen, for he is settled in his mind that God will take care of him. So you take this truth from Psalm 112, 6-7. This is for you, mothers, as you lean on Christ for stability. Listen to Christ for direction. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know what I am planning for you. God is saying, Christ is saying to all mothers this morning, I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future. 
finally look to Christ for salvation. This is from Psalms 46 verse 2. God is our protection and our strength. He always helps us in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid even if the earth shakes or the mountains fall into the sea. The world is shaking. The pandemic is shaking our family life even right now. But do not be afraid. For God is our protection and our strength. He always helps us in times of trouble. A crisis creates a moment in our lives when you can, sh you, you can shift your dependence to something that can never be taken from you. And our relationship with God as our Father, our position as a child can never be taken away from us. You know, and that's why Paul in 2 Corinthians 1, 9 to 10 says this, We were truly crushed and overwhelmed, right? By all the circumstances that came to us. And we feared we would never live through it, right? And, and some of us are feeling like that. We feel crushed and overwhelmed in this pandemic. And we fear that we may not live successfully through it. Uh, we saw how powerless we were to help ourselves, right? Uh, but Paul says that was good. For then we put everything into the hands of God who alone could save us and He did help us and save us. And not only He did help us and save us, Paul says, and we expect Him to do it again and again. So brothers and sisters, mothers out there, parents out there in this crisis have the right perspective of God, that God is in control all the time, right? And in, if you have this right perspective, you will, you will be unshaken in your position. You will know and know and know that you are a child of God. And as a child of God, God is your father, your protector, your preserver, and, and uh, 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 not only give you prov and provider for you and your family. And, and finally, finally, with the right perspective, with the right uh, unchanging position, as a child of God, you can then carry your life in confidence, in faith, in an inner fortitude that will enable you to successfully navigate yourself through any adversity and through this pan pandemic and uh, see your family through. All right, uh, let, let's, let's pray together as we end our time this morning. If you are going through a difficult, especially difficult time in this pandemic. Especially mothers, you know, you're, you're juggling so many things. And, uh, maybe there are different whammies in life that has hit you. Not, not just the fear of uh, the COVID-19, but maybe some of you have taken a decrease in your pay. Some of you have lost your job. Uh, but your duties as a mother carries on at home. Uh, social distancing is, is devoiding you of help okay, and support system that normally you have in caring for your family and caring for if you have ailing parents or if you have ailing spouses. Uh, uh, so some of these things can be overwhelming in stress. Right? Uh, this, this morning, I want you to lift up your hands to God if you are in that position. And, and I want to remind you of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians that we have read just now. That Paul says we were really crushed. So if you are crushed, if you are overwhelmed, and, and if you fear that you, you, know, you do not know how you're going to get through this uh, pandemic, Paul says and fear we will never live through it. And if you see how powerless you are to help yourself, right? Um, just as Paul saw how powerless they were to help themselves, Paul says that was good. That was good. And that was good not because we are sadists, not because we, we enjoy going through hardship, but that was good because if we put everything in the hands of God, that is in control all the time. And if we trust Him, we know that He alone can save us and He will help us and save us. And Paul says we expect Him to do it again and again. This is our God. If we have this perspective and we have this unchanging knowledge that we are child of God and because we are children of God, God is our 
father and no father will wish evil on their children but only to give good things to their children and we know that this will come right and that god is our protector our preserver right and our provider for us and our family family even though the world may seek to rob us but god is not a robber of the family god is a blesser of that family and if we know this then we can stand resolute and have this inner fortitude that will help us through this adversity and this crisis mothers pray this us go back to christ this morning come before his throne of grace and throne him in your life and then you will see like naomi saw right god god is a god that will never 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 leave us nor forsake us father i pray that this truth will come upon all mothers especially those lord who are facing a challenging time in this pandemic those who are struggling with parenting in crisis lord in this crisis i pray that this truth will set them free lord this truth will set them free that although we are crushed although we are overwhelmed we did need not fear we need not feel powerless although sometimes we feel powerless because we have our almighty father who has the power to deliver us and will deliver us and will do it again and again lord we thank you that we are your children and that we can build this inner fortitude lord so help us lord this morning especially the mothers that are facing so many challenges and anyone else lord that is in crisis that is in, that is crying out to you this morning lord may the truth of 2 corinthians 1 9 to 10 that we have read lord be the truth that will set them free and help them to build the right perspective know their position and and uh, stand in faith and the right posture of confidence and inner fortitude lord to face adversity and hardship and yet lord be better and not be bitter so lord we thank you thank you for this time in jesus name amen just for reflection three quick questions what is your perspective of this pandemic what do you see where is god in your life in this pandemic is parenting easier or tougher in this pandemic right so how can i be better parents in this uh, pandemic so thank you and we will see you next Sunday. And once again, happy Mother's Day. Say
the holy place The joy of the
We lift you in this place, Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of our online service today. May the Lord's presence go with us and keep us well. See you again and have an awesome week.